On April 15th of 2019, Notre Dame in Paris, France caught fire. For those of us who love history, this was a very sad day. There was fear that a lot would be lost. Alas, they were able to rescue a bunch of artifacts, including the mysterious crown of thorns that is said to be held at Notre Dame. Regardless of if the crown of thorns at Notre Dame is the actual crown of thorns worn by Jesus on his crucifixion or not, many people in the truther community or conspiracy community believe that Notre Dame's purpose hasn't always and isn't necessarily holy. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Also, a very, very special thank you to all of our patrons who help us support this channel. If you too would like to become a patron and help support this channel, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce and today on this very special edition of Esoteric Atlanta, we are going to be talking about the Devil's Door of Notre Dame. Now, before we dive into this legend about the Devil's Door of Notre Dame, I do want to tell you guys that I really, really appreciate all the support that everyone has given us. This week has been a very, very crazy week. You guys know on Saturday, Tom Numbers and I on our show decoded some information about Atlanta that we were not expecting. I ended up going on Charlie Ward's show to talk about it. And for my patrons out there, we are going to be releasing some footage from the Tyler Perry studio tomorrow, Friday evening, for you all to view. Now, I did include some of the footage at the end of the episode with Charlie Ward on this channel, Esoteric Atlanta, but it wasn't all of the footage. So I will be sharing that with our patrons. I also have a very exciting guest coming on the show tomorrow. The show tomorrow will air tomorrow evening, Friday evening. Normally the Friday show does air in the morning, but because of this awesome guest coming on, it is going to air later tomorrow afternoon. Okay, let's get into the story. So Notre Dame de Paris literally means Our Lady of Paris. Now again, I'm not Catholic, so I apologize if I've got this information wrong, but it does seem to me that this cathedral was built in honor of the Virgin Mary. Notre Dame is the most visited attraction in Paris, gathering 12 million people annually. Notre Dame is in the center of Paris and is a bit of a crossroads for the country of France. Now, when I was 17, I went to Notre Dame. And even though I was more interested in places like the Eiffel Tower when I was in France, I remember being deeply affected by the cathedral itself. Now, I also remember thinking that that cathedral didn't seem to carry much goodness to it. Sorry if I'm a offending anybody. That was just my opinion at 17. In fact, the cathedral kind of scared me a little bit. However, that's neither here nor there. Now, the interesting thing about Notre Dame is that where the cathedral is, there's always been a religious site there. Back before the Roman Empire adapted Christianity with the ruler Constantine, with the Council of Nicaea, this area, this little island in the middle of the Seine River was a pagan temple. It was a pagan temple dedicated to the god Jupiter. Now, Jupiter was one of the three patron gods of the Roman Empire. Jupiter came from the Greek pantheon, and Jupiter was Zeus. Now, there is also a legend that Paris was built on top of an old pagan city, not just Notre Dame the Cathedral being on top of a Jupiter temple, but the city itself was very pagan. This makes sense. We know that the Gentiles were pagan before the Judeo-Christian religion spread throughout the Roman Empire. 
Now we know that the temple on the location of Notre Dame was a Jupiter temple because they found what they call a boatman in 1710 that was dedicated to the worship of Jupiter. It wasn't until the 4th century that there was a Christian temple put in the pagan temple's place. Now this location where Notre Dame is located would go on to have three or four different renditions of a Christian temple before Notre Dame as we know it today was built. Construction began on Notre Dame on in 1163. It wasn't complete until 1345, so it took a couple of hundred years to get Notre Dame up and functioning. Now, during the French Revolution, which was in the later part of the, the 1700s, like 1790, the cathedral experienced a lot of deterioration due to the massive amount of war that was going on. However, in 1831, Victor Hugo, the same person that wrote Les Miserables about the French Revolution, released The Hunchback of Notre Dame. This brought a lot of cultural fascination back on this cathedral and therefore they started to clean the cathedral up and make it more of a touristy attraction that we see today. Yes, before anybody mentions in the comments, I do know that Notre Dame does act as a cathedral or a church diocese. However, I would bet, if I were a betting woman, I would bet that most of the people who walk through those doors the devil's doors are there as tourists. Now, speaking of the devil's doors, it was in the mid 1300s that they needed an iron worker, a metal smith, to design doors to be right at the front of this cathedral. In Paris at that time was a young metal worker named Bisconnet, and he really was eager to get his design out there. He was hustling. He thought, man, if I could get my design on the doors of this massive cathedral in the center of Paris, my work will blow through the roof. I mean, people don't change. We do the same thing today. We got that one viral video on YouTube that makes us blow up. We get that one client that really helps us set up our career. This was the same thing for Biscone. And in fact, Biscone sent many, many, many drawings to the higher ups of the Catholic Church for their approval. And many, many, many times, Biscone was rejected for his work. It is said at this point, Biscone became panicked and disparaged. You see, this whole time he had been praying to God to help him create the perfect design for these doors, designs that were then rejected. So he decided in his desperation that he would pray to Satan, to the devil, to help him design doors. After allegedly praying to Satan, Biscone made a design of the doors that was approved by the higher-ups at the Catholic Church. Once the construction started on the doors, people around Paris, Paris started to talk because he got the designs up rather quickly, too quickly for a human being. At this point, the citizens of Paris started to suspect that Biscone had sold his soul to the devil in order to achieve this masterpiece. Well, be that as it may, rumors or not, the doors were finished again in very quick time. It seemed that Biscone's job was done. However, when they went to go open up the doors, they could not get the doors to open. They quickly went over to Biscone's apartment to ask him how to get these doors open, and when they got there, they found Biscone hanging. It seems that he had committed suicide. And he had a letter that he left behind, where he told the people that the doors were inspired by the devil. And he could not live with his guilt anymore. And if they had problems with the doors, they needed to douse the doors in holy water. Well, right when they got back to the doors, they put holy water on the doors and the doors opened. 
It is still said to this day that many tourists still see the ghost of Biscone sitting in front of his doors. Is he trying to protect people from the devil? Is he paying penance for his greed and his um, selling his soul to the devil? Who knows? But there is also something very interesting about the doors. It seems that on the doors design, there is homage to the devil himself. On the lower levels of the doors, you can see the number 666. Something very fascinating about the metal worker who created the doors, Biscone. It seems that his name translates to a horned beast. Bis, meaning two, and Kone, meaning horn. Now, what do you think? Do you think this is an urban legend that just grew over the centuries, or do you believe that there's some truth to this story? You see, the doors at Notre Dame are not the only thing that people think belongs to the devil. Notre Dame is also very famous for its gargoyles. Now, the story is that the gargoyles are placed to help the rain run off the roof in a particular way as to not ruin the building, but many people believe that that's just a cover story and there's something more dangerous about these gargoyles. If you would like a story going deeper into the gargoyles of Notre Dame, just let me know down in the comment section below. All right, guys, I hope you're having a wonderful Thursday afternoon. Again, please look for our new video that's going to be released tomorrow evening with our very, very, very special guest that I'm super excited about. And for all the people who reached out to me after I was on Charlie's show who are from the state of Georgia thanking me because you felt like you were alone in the state, I am here to tell you that you are not alone. There are a lot of us here in this state that are awake and see exactly what's going on. Just hold tight. The best is absolutely yet to come. All right, thank you guys so much again. If you would like to purchase our opening song, as always, there is a link down in the description box below. Thank you to Josh McKay for doing our opening music, and thank you again to Todd Roderick for helping me get this show out to you guys on the internet. FYI, Todd Roderick and his band, The Flying Mystics, there is a link again to their channel down in the description box below will be performing on the Dark Outpost at some time in the future, so do keep your eyes open for that. All right, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye!